Welcome everybody, in today's video we're going to attempt an Elden Ring challenge run, wherein our only weapon is the Serpent Hunter Sword. A sword, mind you, that can only be found during the Reichard Shardbearer fight, a big story fight much later in the game. So the rules are pretty simple. Rule number one, we're only allowed one weapon during the entire game, that being the Serpent Hunter of course. This means no bows, shields, etc. Rule number two, we must attempt every main boss fight in the game. Rule number three, we can equip any armor or talisman we want. And rule number four, we must attempt to fight each main boss without any summons unless we use the mimic, since of course that would be limited to what our character can equip. We're gonna start off by making our character and for this run, we're gonna use the wretch class. In other words, we're starting off with absolutely nothing. I think this is a pretty fitting name, Big Sag. So we start off the game inside of a church and make our way over to the first fight, but sadly, we're not going to be able to fight this boss as we don't have the Serpent Hunter, plus our fists are pretty bad. So instead, we'll get our first death and believe me, there are so many more to come. Upon revival, we're found by some mysterious person on a horse. She'll be important later, but for now, she has high hopes that we're going to become Elden Lord. <laughs> if only she knew what lied ahead of us. We start off by running past the tutorial area because unfortunately there's a boss at the end of it. So we go up the stairs and hit our first gray site. And then we'll allocate our potions to solely health and add an extra one with our golden seed. We head up the elevator and find the view of a lifetime. By the way, that's a mini boss over there. So we go to the next side of Grace and talk to the NPC who looks at us and is probably thinking, <laughs> he won't last very long. So we run past the mini boss into the church ahead for another gray site since, you know, we can't exactly fight anything, but, uh... Yeah, we get killed pretty quickly. After coming back to life, we pick up some things and make our way towards some enemies. Not like we can do much, though. We make it to our next side of Grace and are formally introduced to a familiar character from earlier. She gives us a promise ring, or uh, I mean a summon ring for a horse that we can use to make it around much easier. We head back to the church and talk to another NPC who tells us to ring this bell when we need help, sadly not very useful since we can't use summons, before leaving us to our cruel fate. We use Torrent, the horse, to make our way through hordes of enemies. Now. It is very important to mention that we cannot do anything in the game until we get the Serpent Hunter weapon, which is located pretty far away from us and requires us to skip past a lot of the game. So before we can even start this run, we need to first obtain the sword. So first, we go around Stormvale Castle by taking some sketchy paths and maybe dying a few times before arriving in Lyurnia of the Lakes. We stop at the Church of Irith and grab a Sacred Tear so we can heal more with each sip of our flask. If you don't know much about Dark Souls as a series, it's not too important to look into it right now. But we're going to stop at another side of Grace and... yeah get reminded that we're playing Dark Souls. But now we need to start an important quest. Simply put, there is one way to get to the area we need to go by interacting with this NPC called Raya. She will help us get to where we need if we help her out. So we go and get a few more sites of grace before finding another NPC who stole Raya's necklace. So we ask for it back. Just kidding, we've gotta buy it back. While we get some runes or souls if you haven't played Elden Ring yet, we're gonna go and get a needed item for later in this village inside the anal cavity of this mountain. So we climb in and up and then hit a random pot with our hand. The cowering man then gives us a medallion and tells us to go away probably because of how disturbing we look to them. We ride off in search of some runes to buy the necklace and even grab the academy glintstone key hidden behind a massive dragon. It'll be useful later on, I promise. We find another side of Grace, and our girl Melina tells us that she's been testing us and wants us to go to her clubhouse hidden inside of a golden tree. We accept and then get roasted by the fellow club members who think we're simping on the locals. We leave because our feelings are hurt and immediately get reminded that we're playing Dark Souls. We then decide to go around the road to avoid getting killed by flying debris and get another side of Grace. Unfortunately, we cannot use this elevator because we need to get a medallion. So we go and hunt it down, but not before we come across a giant pot man who wants us to help him out. So we do what we do best. He tells us how pathetic we are, so we run away and, oh wow, this pumpkin man shares my feelings exactly. We took a wrong turn and somehow ended up in hell, but fret not, we must come here for the medallion anyway. We chat with our friend and then move on to find that our coin somehow ended up inside this fortress. So we quickly run through and find that somebody broke our special coin and took it to another cat or I mean fortress. 
We run back to Limgrave and find a mysterious fort in a forest and quickly make our way there while the locals chase us down for not wearing pants this whole time. We get the other half of the coin and loot some graves since we're desperate for runes and make our way back to the shack where we buy the necklace and give it back to Raya. We then head back to the elevator and use our coin to make our way up to the new area. When we surface, we find that Raya has been waiting for us and she tells us that we're her champion. She then drugs us and we awaken another new area. Thankfully, this is where we need to be in order to get our weapon. We take a nap on some golden light and end off the first day. Oh my god, it's day two. Holy crap. Welcome back. It's a suck. Now day two was an interesting one. We wake up from our nap and talk to Lady Tanith. She gives us a key and we break some walls. We make our way through the darkness of the halls and find our next side of grace. We open the door and take in the view. Now we're gonna need some health for this area, as the enemies here hit incredibly hard, so being able to take one hit at least and survive is pretty good. We run through the prison town of lava and dodge some enemies and make our way down to the resident evil manor full of scary and murderous enemies. We get our next side of grace and then are reminded that we're still playing Dark Souls. We continue to make our way around the prison town of lava and try to sneak past an enemy, though not very successfully. We try again and make our way up the elevator cage and past the landlord that chases us for being on their property. We break some stuff to give us an easier route here but are swiftly subdued by the landlord. We head back to the church, unsuccessfully try a glitch, and then are met with the point of no return. Now you see, there is only one right way to get to Rykard and obtain our sword, which is to go through this temple and up an elevator. However, this is a required boss fight, and in order to get to Rykard, we're not allowed to fight any bosses unless we have our weapon equipped. So we need to perform what might be harder than the actual boss. Well, maybe. More on that later. We need to perform a very precise move set to get around the church. This requires us to perform perfect inputs to get around two pillars and climb a very steep wall. Also, if you mess up at any point and die, you have to redo the entire thing again. This is where I got really nervous and feared that it may not be doable. I died over 40 plus times just to get past the two pillars, because if you mess up on any of them, you fall and die, which means you have to do this move twice perfectly. Oh my god, come on. <laughs> Damn it, I did it again. Son of a frick. God. So did you look up how to do it? Yeah, it's not very easy. Holy crap. God, you've gotta be fucking kidding me. Ugh. I lost years off my life getting past these pillars. And when I finally did, you can just tell from my reaction that I've been doing this for far too long. Oh my god. <laughs> This is where the uh, death montage is, huh? <laughs> I'm actually, I stopped recording and I'm just doing instant replays because I've died so many times. <laughs> and it takes so long to get back. Oh, so you just record the snippet of you running, you're just gonna repeat it? No, I'm just, I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna probably do like a bunch of death montage and just. Of just you falling out the same yeah, fucking cliff. Cause otherwise I'll be at this for like hours and that's just not worth it. Oh my god, holy shit, finally! Now, there was this wall which also required perfect movement and something called sprint buffering. The geometry of the wall is just flat enough for you to stand on some certain areas. You then have to climb really high and if you mess up, you have to redo it all over again. Thankfully though, it's pretty hard to die here. When I finally made it, here was my reaction. <gasps> yes! 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 Oh my god! Holy crap, that took me so long. Oh my god. Now, my heart was racing because I now needed to sprint for Rikard because there were no sights of grace until you got there and if you died, you had to restart everything over. I took my time doing this. I was literally shitting my pants right now. The adrenaline was so high. On my first try, I managed to get past all the enemies to Rikard and I felt so much relief. I got the sword I needed and was finally ready to start the run. But not before poking a snake with a stick and finding out a tried and true lesson about nature and its power. I quickly made my way back to Limgrave where I unleashed the fury of a thousand deaths and started to grind runes to get some levels going. I felt like I was on top of the world. 
I go back to a church where a man tells me to find a wolf man and teaches me how to make noise with my fingers. I go to some ruins in the forest where a noise of howling bothers me, and I use my newfound skill of snapping. A wolf man appears and tells me to help him murder a guy in jail, so we visit the jail and smack them into submission and steal their money. The wolf man gives me a rock and I take it to a giant who sells me another rock that I can use to make my sword even stronger. I kill a few more people and steal their clothes before making my way back to Stormvale, where I am reminded again that we're still playing Dark Souls. We then start our run officially with our first main boss fight. Now I need to mention some things really quick. I will be showing off my first and last attempts of every boss fight in full with no commentary. This is to understand how the bosses work and for anyone who wants to see how a fight like this goes. Feel free to skip past them if the only thing you want to see is just the progress of the run.
Unfortunately, I died, and I still need to do something to get stronger. Thankfully, I can access a later area in the game that I had locked, and could fight some harder enemies. I needed to go back to the clubhouse and tell the club members how wrong they were of me. I show up, and one of the club members wanted to see how big my sword was and prove that theirs was bigger. I whip mine out, and unfortunately, they fainted at the sight of it since they couldn't handle the power and girth. I steal some clothes and muster up the courage to tell the old man from earlier that he hurt my feelings. He ignores me, so I go and use the rocks from earlier to strengthen my weapon. I make my way back to hell and grab a few more rocks from some enemies and a couple of dead bodies. I then go to Limgrave and get a few more Sights of Grace and kill a few more enemies. Now, in all seriousness, we head back to the Altus Plateau or the Golden Area and grind a few enemies to get our levels up pretty high. If you haven't fought these enemies, by the way, they are great and give a lot of rooms for early game grinding. Plus, they're pretty satisfying to beat. We can take a rest at a new site of grace and our girl Melina checks in to see what we've been up to since we last saw her. Needless to say, she was probably pretty confused and probably questioned whether giving us the ring was a good idea. We grab another rock and are again reminded that we're still playing Dark Souls, and yet decide that it's time to fight Bargit yet again. After all is said and done, it took us seven attempts to beat Margit. Not bad. We make our way back to the Volcano Manor Church and head inside to fight the boss that we have put off for some time. We go inside and... Yeah, they found that to be pretty offensive and quickly killed us in self-defense since we invaded their home. We try again and are killed for home invasion again before trying to show some lizards what anal intercourse is. Turns out they don't like it and quickly subdue us. 